I'm at Brunton's Boatyard Hotel in tropical Cochin. It's a really steamy morning this morning, but that's not going to stop me from making a vegetarian sambar. Now, a sambar is a lovely vegetable dish with lentils in it. And one of the secrets is the combination of spices that give a sambar a beautiful flavour. And to do this, we actually make up a sambar blend. And the sambar blend comprises brown mustard seeds, turmeric, cinnamon, coriander, pepper, some uh, amateur powder, which is actually made from the green mango. So we dry that down and make that into a powder. It has cumin in it, it has a bit of chilli, and it has besan flour, which is a chickpea flour. And that's a very important part of giving this total flavour. Now I'm going to get a little bit of heat going here and add some coconut oil as we do in so much of this South Indian cooking. And to make life easy, I have actually made up a sambar spice mix. And the great thing about this is that all the spices that I've mentioned are blended together. I fry up this mix in the coconut oil and make that into a paste. We just fry that up fairly gently. You can really start to get the aromas coming off this as you fry that up. When you can see that forming up nicely, we then start to add the vegetables. And I'm putting in some carrot, some okra, some brinjal, which is the lovely uh, little mini eggplant, and some potato. You can be quite flexible with this because you can really use any vegetables that will remain reasonably firm when cooked. And then I just stir that around so the spice mix coats all the vegetables. And it just helps to seal them a little bit. And when they're all nicely coated with the spice mix, I add some water, just about enough to cover the vegetables, and a little bit of salt. And before the next step, I cover that and let the vegetables cook for around about 10 minutes. When I serve this, I always like to serve it with some saffron rice. And speaking of saffron, there's a little tip for you travellers when you're going around and you're looking at saffron in the markets. Believe it or not, there is a lot of fake saffron that's for sale. You can see it in a lovely little box. It says on it that it's guaranteed pure, warranted for life, all of that sort of thing. The trick is that when you look at it very closely, you'll notice that it doesn't really look like saffron because it is a straight little piece and it's not a trumpet-shaped stigma as we have with true saffron. And then the real acid test is to put some in water because what happens is that the fake saffron will colour almost instantly because the artificial colouring leaches out just about straight away. The real saffron will actually take a little while to infuse. You'll also notice with the real saffron that the stigma is actually trumpet shaped. It's not dead straight. And last of all, when you've had it soaking, if you pick up a piece of fake saffron and you rub it in between your fingers, it will actually dissolve which means it's not saffron at all. It's made out of some sort of jelly substance. So buyer beware when you're out there in the markets looking at saffron. This is the fake saffron, and you can see it's a really deep red color, probably full of artificial coloring. This one is the real saffron, and look how the color is a beautiful golden yellow. Those vegetables are looking pretty good now. So we add the yellow split peas that are a little bit on the mushy side. We don't want them too mushy though, because it's nice to retain a little bit of texture. Mix those through. And pop the lid on and cook for about another 10 or 15 minutes. This is something that when we make it at home, we will often make it in a big pot, maybe three or four times this quantity, and we'll freeze portions. A really handy quick meal is to just take one of those portions and defrost it and serve that with some rice. Tasty, 
healthy, has all the spices, and of course, every time you have it, you'll think of the wonderful time that I've had in the south of India.